Picture it. New York City. The Big Apple. 1888. Eugene O'Neill was born in a hotel room. Imagine being the neighbors to that room that night. Eugene's father was an alcoholic and a well-known Shakespearean actor, despite forgetting most of his lines due to being drunk. So, Eugene was exposed to Shakespearean theater at a very early age. No wonder why his mother was addicted to morphine. Imagine waiting around all day for your husband just to have him come home and bore you to death with Shakespeare. So clearly, Eugene's family has some problems. Mommy issues and daddy issues. He attended a Catholic boarding school and then spent several years at sea during which he suffered from depression and followed after his father's footsteps, alcoholism. I guess it's true, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Now, our boy Eugene had a rough life. His mother, father, and older brother all died within three years of one another. So Eugene's like, okay, now I'm really sad. All my family died. That sucks. So, his work consistently reflects themes of death and mourning. Later in his life, Eugene would include his deceased family members as characters in his plays. So then, after that, things are all fine and dandy for our boy Eugene, right? So, he gets married to his first wife, and then she's like, Um, actually, just kidding. I don't really like you that much. I want a divorce. And Eugene's like, well, uh, that's kind of rude. And she's like, yeah, but I don't really care. Sorry. Bye. So poor Eugene's like, okay, well, now I'm like really sad. And he actually ends up attempting suicide. Luckily, it didn't work. He was okay after that. And things were looking up. And then he got diagnosed with tuberculosis because apparently he can't get a break. So this is actually the time when Eugene O'Neill finds his calling as a playwright. He's in the sanitarium recovering from his tuberculosis, and he decides, you know what? I think I'm going to be a playwright. I'm actually pretty good at this writing stuff. I can write some depressing things, make people think about life, maybe talk about my family traumas. Why not? At this time in his life, Eugene identifies his three main interests as books, alcohol, and women. About four years after his diagnosis of tuberculosis, Eugene O'Neill finds love again. In 1916, he marries fellow writer Agnes Bolton, and the couple eventually have two children together. Eugene O'Neill took the theatrical world by storm in 1920 with Beyond the Horizon. Later that year, another O'Neill masterpiece, The Emperor Jones, made its Broadway debut. In other words, he was doing pretty well. In 1922, he brought his drama Anna Christie to the Broadway stage. Eugene's private struggles with illness and family trauma seemed to aid him in creating greater dramatic works for the stage including Desire Under the Elms and Strange Interlude. In 1936, Eugene became the first American playwright to receive the Nobel Prize for Literature. He's really living it up at this time in his life. And then his daughter Una marries Charlie Chaplin, and Eugene's like, um, what are you doing? It's Charlie Chaplin. This is not happening under my roof. And his daughter's like, but I love Charlie Chaplin, and we're gonna be a happy couple. And Eugene's like, okay, that's fine, but I'm disowning you. See you later. After several years away from the stage, in 1946, Eugene returned with one of his most famous works, The Iceman Cometh. The following year, he learned that he had Parkinson's disease, because of course he did, it's Eugene O'Neill. And after this, it was kind of impossible for him to write because of the tremors in his hands. 
He also ended up cutting ties with his youngest son, Shane, after Shane was arrested for drug possession. And two years later, his eldest son committed suicide. Eugene O'Neill died of bronchitis pneumonia in 1953 at the age of 65. On his deathbed, he said, I knew it, I knew it. Born in a hotel room and died in a hotel room. Eugene's playwriting efforts were not in vain. He is a member of the American Theatre Hall of Fame and is considered the first truly great American dramatist. Four times awarded the Pulitzer Prize. Driven by his obsession for truth, he flooded the theater with the naked power and passion of honest human emotion. Even past death, Eugene was a huge influence on fellow playwrights and even the way we do theater today. For example, he was one of the first people to introduce psychological and social realism to an American stage. He really focused on characters marginalized by society. Before him, it was all melodrama and all of this, but he was the first playwright to actually take it seriously as an aesthetic form. He also influenced a lot of people we know today. For example, Arthur Miller, who wrote The Crucible and Death of a Salesman. Writers today even look at his work and say, hey, that's pretty cool. We can use that or even revive it. For example, The Iceman Cometh has had multiple Broadway revivals, TV productions, and films, some of which with actors we all know and love. For example, Denzel Washington. Even a long day's journey in tonight is another example of a play that got so much recognition and was an autobiography actually by Eugene that is still known today. There was even an adaptation recently done about it, which shows the impact that he had on today's theater and film. He left behind a legacy of over 50 influential plays. Eugene O'Neill's work continues to move audiences and inspire creators today. Just say hi. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry, I forgot. <laughs> no, no, don't do that. So, okay. No, oh, sorry. Okay. okay. No, oh. If he actually ends up attempting suit, that sucks. Good? Take a pic, or like... Just... <laughs> Did he leave you at the altar? <laughs> can we actually do this? Really can we do this? Yeah, but that over. Sorry. Bye. So for Eugene, he's like, okay. Did you I'll want a divorce? And Eugene's like, well. Oh, f <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm recording, but that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm yelling at the alcohol, Chloe. It didn't do anything to you. <laughs>